Hello, how are you my friends? Hope you like my previous video and who haven't seen the video yet, I had given the link in my description box. So what we'll discuss today. In my last video, we had gone through the basic terms of accountancy. Now today we will move further. The rules for debit and credit. So what is the rules for debit and credit? Actually, the rules for debit and credit to understand properly, you should have to know the system of accounting. On what basis we will maintain our accounting form. The system is called double entry system. Actually, as we know, Sir Isaac Newton, the greatest scientist who invented every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The concept of double entry system of bookkeeping developed in the same idea. On the basis of the same idea, the double entry system of bookkeeping developed. Although its time of invention is a matter to be traced in blurred page of history. And in 1494, an Italian, Luca Pacioli, advocated the system. So, double entry system came to be accepted as a standard accounting system of accountancy. What is double entry system? Double entry system means it is just like a two sides of a coin. Every transaction of accountancy has got two aspects. One is receiving aspects. Another one is giving aspects. So on the basis of this duality, the rules of debit and credit being framed in accountancy. There are two approaches to the accountancy for maintaining debit and credit of recording any transactions. So the two aspects means one is traditional, another one is modern approaches to the accountancy. So first I will show, we will discuss regarding the traditional approach of accountancy. Traditional approach. In traditional approach, it is the application of rules of accountancy. Under traditional approach, which is popularly known as golden rules of accountancy. So, under this approach, it is the basic unit of recording is an account. The accounts involved actually in a transactions have to be found out first. Uh, then, which account should be debited and which one is to be credited can be found out in two ways. So, debit and credit are the indicators of accountancy. It shows the position of business in accountancy. Under traditional approach, accounts are classified into three parts. Personal account, real account and nominal account. Personal account, what is personal account? Which deals with individuals, firm, company, etc. means persons are involved there like X account, Y account, Ram account, Sham account, debtors account, creditors account, all of the list of names. Similarly, company accounts, etc. So what is the rule for them? Debit the receiver of the benefit and credited the account when it is giver of the benefit. 
So receiver of the benefit is debited and giver of the benefit is credited in case of personal account. Real account and nominal account are called impersonal aspects because real account deals with assets and liabilities. Assets and liabilities. For example, plant account, building account, cash account, goodwill account, loans account, etc. As we know. And what are the rules for them? Debit what comes in and credit what goes out. Similarly, nominal account, it deals with expenses, incomes, gains and losses. For example, purchase account, sales account, rent account, salaries account, interest account, discount account. And the account expenses or losses are debited and incomes or gains are credited. Those are called the golden rules of accounting in traditional approach. So we will show the next part that is modern approach of accountancy. This is another approach and most scientific approach that is modern approach of accountancy. It is based on application of accounting equation. So look at the board. I'll show the modern approach of accountancy. It is little bit different from traditional approach. As per the norms and conditions of double entry system, total debits is equal to total credits. And in modern approach, total assets equal to total liabilities as it is based on accounting equation. In my next video, I'll show accounting equation. So here just remember total assets is equal to total liabilities. Now what are the ruling for debit and credit? Assets. Here there are two indicators increase or decrease. So whenever increase of assets that means positive effect we consider it is as debit and similarly decrease of assets indicating credit in case of liabilities decrease of liabilities debit increase of liabilities credit as assets and liabilities are opposite concept in accountancy so that's why debit of assets is equal to credit of liabilities and similarly credit of assets equal to debit of liability so they are crisscross as they are the opposite conception of accountancy but liabilities means external liabilities actually and another form of liability is proprietorship which is called internal liability so ownership that is capital so liabilities and proprietorship are the same concept of debit and credit ruling that's why proprietorship decrease debit and proprietorship increase credit so it behaves like liability in case of expenses and losses increase of expenses and losses debit decrease of expenses and losses credit and income and gains decrease of income and gains debit and increase of income and gains credit so expenses and losses and income and gains are opposite conception that's why look at the board it is a crisscross method being followed here so these are the rules for modern approach to undergo to crack any sum 
in accountancy. First, we have learned traditional approach and after that, I have showed the modern approach of accountancy. Hope you have understood the rules for debit and credit in accountancy. If you like the video, then please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to press the bell icon. So, that's all for the day. Thank you.